I started working in holography in 1964. At that time, there were about six people in the world who ever made a hologram. And uh, at that point, what we were doing was making holograms of objects that when you reconstruct the hologram, would reconstruct an image of the object. And the image would look totally real, like the object was really there. So you could move around and see it in 3D. And everything you did to that image would convince you that it was real. You could look at it with a magnifying glass or a microscope, uh, and it would be as if the object was really there. But this was image reconstruction from a hologram. As time went on, and uh, I continued studying physics and combining all these different ideas together, I realized that matter itself is made from the interference pattern of energy, just like the images from a hologram are made from the interference patterns of energy. Well, so is matter. It's just a different energy, and it's a different wavelength, different size uh, waves of energy. So that made me realize that you could actually make a hologram of the interference pattern of the energy that makes it matter, and that means a hologram could be a matter hologram, meaning that it would reconstruct matter by putting the right energy through it. And this was a radical idea, and it, it just amazed me when I first thought of it. But after a while, it became clear that that was accurate, and that is the way the real world is, that everything that exists is just an interference pattern of energy. So when I was introduced to Gene Roddenberry, I explained this to him, and I was explaining to him that holography has to play a part in Star Trek because it's going to be a part of the future, because it's reality. And we talked about the different ways that it could be used uh, creating matter and creating images. So the idea of the holodeck was a combination of these types of holograms because it takes, of course, a lot more energy to create matter from interference patterns of energy than it does to create an image of matter. And when you are on the holodeck, things don't always have to be matter. You know, if it's uh, things in the distance that you can't interact with, certainly it's fine to be imagery. Even if it's things that you can interact with, if you're going to interact with it in certain ways that only require feeling it, touching it, and that's it, well, then you could put force fields of attraction or repulsion on top of the images, and so it would be believable that those objects were there, and yet you wouldn't have to use all the energy necessary to create the matter itself. But then in some other things that you wanted to create in the holodeck, it would have to be matter. Like if it was a, something you drank or if you got wet, the water would have to be actually created so that you'd be wet. And of course, you walk out of the holodeck, you're still wet because it's real water. Uh, and food and drink, things like that would have to be matter that was constructed by the interference pattern um, on the holodeck. And that's also the same technology that would be used in the food replicator. When Picard would say, Earl Grey tea, hot, that would be a matter hologram because then he could drink it. Um, now, when you talk about could, could you eat holographic matter that was an image, no, because if it's an image, you're not eating it. As soon as, even if it has a force field on it, as soon as you, it goes into your mouth, it ceases to exist. So for you to be experiencing eating and drinking, it would have to be matter. Now, could you make a holographic person? The answer is yes, the same way, because if you have the information that makes up all the interference patterns of energy that makes up the matter of a person, then you could reconstruct the person. Just like uh, you have uh, another person over for dinner, you don't have enough chairs, so you use a matter hologram, create another chair, and now you can sit on the chair. And you don't need the hologram anymore because the matter now exists. Same with the person. The person would be constructed. And this is the basis for teleportation and will be in the, in the future. So you'll be here. You'll be interrogated by this device, which will get all the interference pattern data of you and then send that data to another location. Energy will be put through that holographic system, generating the matter, 
which will be you again, and you will have teleported from here to there, which of course brings up the questions, the ethical questions. Wait a minute, is that really you, or is that a copy of you? Did you get killed and a new copy is continuing? And it, it could be that way unless you do it right, because what makes you you is not the same matter. In fact, you're not the same matter. You're not the same matter that you were a minute ago. Every seven years, most of your cells are gone, and it's new cells, because your cells die and new cells are born. So you're not the same person you were seven years ago. But it's still you. What makes you you is the continuity in your brain of memories, thoughts, and experiences that you're having as you're conscious. That's what makes you you, not the same matter itself. So if you teleport, as long as it sets up so that not only does the copy of you have all the same memories and, and thoughts and programming, but there's a continuity in perception from your first location to your second location, then it's still you. So that's my answer to would teleportation kill you or not. If it's done right, no. Uh, so these are the concepts that I... Uh, went over with Gene Roddenberry and were incorporated into the holodeck and into Star Trek and uh, should answer those questions. It's as simple as that.